Hi everybody, in this episode of Brew Attack, we are going to be looking at the Sigma trailer that Overwatch just released. All right, welcome back. So make sure that you like and subscribe, and if you really like this video, please share it. Today's featured course is how to build a battle royale in Unity and Blender. Build a complete battle royale from scratch in Unity and Blender. The links are below, and remember that every single dollar that we get from our courses that you buy below goes into producing more content. So if you're like me, sometimes you play Overwatch, and sometimes you take a look at the trailers that they produce. Even if you're a billion dollar company, sometimes you can use guerrilla tactics to make your trailer look amazing. The Sigma trailer that Overwatch just released is a perfect example of this. So what we're gonna be doing in this video is dissecting the Sigma trailer, and we're gonna be talking about the cheap tricks that they've used to make production a lot less expensive. If you're an independent developer, this video is for you because you need to listen really hard to the tricks that they've used in this trailer. So for those of you who don't know, Overwatch often makes a trailer that adds to the lore of the game. These trailers are often really well produced. The cinematics that Overwatch produces are usually Pixar quality. Oftentimes it's really well polished and animated. They are great to watch and I've watched pretty much all of them. Now often this gives newbies a false sense of what they can accomplish. It will take thousands of man hours to make one of these trailers. So you will not be able to produce this level of quality by working alone in your room in your spare time. It took me years to figure this out. Indies often use techniques to make their trailer look better by using less work. The reason for this is that time is money and you need to spend less of your time to get the same amount of work done. Whenever you make a trailer or a video or produce something that is code, graphics, or a game, then you have to think of your actions as an expense. For instance, if you look at the D.Va trailer that Overwatch produced, that is expensive to make. The expense is time and not money. Adding fluid animations is expensive, particle effects are expensive, and most of all, Putting it all together to make it look really good and polished is very expensive. Remember that polish is expensive. So that's why I adopt a minimalist aesthetic. This is because minimalism gives you the most amount of aesthetic value for the least amount of work. The best example of this is Pete Mondrian the painter. His paintings are famous because they are so simple. The theory is that instead of painting detailed paintings that take a long time to make, a minimalist painting will give you the same amount of aesthetic value for less work. Here is the formula. So let's say you want to paint a detailed painting that takes 300 hours to make and gives you a subjective score of 98. This score is a subjective aesthetic score and is a score on basically how good the painting is. Now let's say you want to reach that same aesthetic core with a different aesthetic, this aesthetic being minimalism. And if you can do this in less time, let's say 10 hours, you've saved a ton of time. And as an indie or a producer that is making something in your bedroom, you need to be very aware of it. Sometimes the decisions that you make will affect the overall quality. And if you can't deliver that quality, as in you don't have enough man hours, you shouldn't do the project. This goes from everything from coding to game development to video production to basically anything creative that you want to produce. Always be mindful of getting the most amount of aesthetic value for the least amount of work. Because let's say you become a success and you need to hire people to do work for you. Now you're not spending your time, you're spending your money and you need to make sure that things are really cheap. You personally might not think that big studios do this, but they do it every single day. The bigger you grow, the more man hours are wasted. You still have to budget very carefully. The bigger the company, the greater chance of failure. Big companies scrap million dollar projects every day. If you wanna become a big company, you have to keep this in mind. This brings me back to the Sigma trailer. I was delighted to see all these indie and time-saving techniques from a big budget studio. Let's take a look at the trailer first and then we'll dissect it. Gravity. Gravity is a harness. My entire career has been devoted to this idea, to this moment, decades. If the unifying theories are correct, we will soon be able to harness the power of a black hole. Nothing will ever be the same. Why? This is wrong. I didn't feel this failing. Ah! Oh, what happened? Where am I? Why am I being imprisoned? He released me! What is that melody? Hold it together. 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 Density, mass, momentum. It is too... It's too much. 
much to hold on to. I will bring you a new understanding of the violence. The universe is singing to me! What is that melody? Freedom. Imprisonment. It's all an illusion. Gravity is a harness. I have harnessed the harness. It's in you! So the first thing to note in this trailer is that there's very little traditional animation in it. Most of the frames in this trailer are still frames and all the animation is done in computers. What I mean by this is that the frames that are drawn are not traditionally drawn animation. Think of an old school Disney movie where someone had to painstakingly hand draw each animation. It's cheaper to take a static image and do some animation or do some work in a computer program like After Effects. This will save you a ton of time. And if you look at this entire trailer, there's not a lot of animation, if any animation at all. When the black hole appears, you'll notice that this is different because there's a particle effect. We'll talk more about the black hole later, but Essentially, it is a pre-rendered animation. In the next scene, Sigma's on a hospital bed and there's almost no animation. The voice actor is doing most of the work to drive this trailer forward. Remember that making a trailer is not about the specifics of animation, it's the specifics of getting the most amount of aesthetic value for the least amount of work. Another thing to consider is that there's many more people that know how to draw with paper and pencil than know how to 3D model in a program like 3DS, Max, Maya, or Blender. In that case, there's gonna be a lot more talented people that you can use to make those static drawing images. If you're using 3DS Max or Maya to make all these animations, it's gonna be a lot more expensive due to the supply and demand of the job market. Since most Overwatch cinematics are done using 3D programs like this, they're a lot more expensive to make. This one mostly uses static drawn images. Another great technique that you can use is to reuse images. In the next scene, you'll see that some of the images are reused and they're reused in a very creative way. The more creative way that you can use your images or reuse anything, the better. If you reuse content, you don't have to do it again. But if you think of a mental way to reuse that content, it becomes cheap. Again, if you can find a creative way to reuse content, you're gonna get more aesthetic value for less work. So the scene where the tiles fall down is really well done because what happens a few seconds later is that they reverse the video. So chances are it was made in a 3D program. They animated it and made a video of it, and then they reversed it. Anytime that you can reverse video, again, reusing it will be a great thing to do for your project. Now let's talk about the black hole. The black hole is probably one of the most expensive things to do in this trailer. And the reason is, is that getting particle effects to work well is really challenging, but you also see that they reuse it. They reuse the same black hole, but they change the color. This is one of the best time saving techniques that you can use. Changing color is amazing. If you can find a way to reuse your content by changing the color creatively, you're gonna get more aesthetic value. Also, if you're using particle effects, then sometimes you can tweak some of the parameters to get more variety. It's a lot easier to do this. One of the reasons why particle effects can be expensive is if you're using it in a fully 3D environment and those particle effects need to enhance whatever it is you're doing. That enhancement and that polish is extremely expensive. This is a great example of particle effects being used in a very cheap way. So this trailer is done extremely well and there's a lot of polish, even by using all these time-saving techniques. My favorite part is when he's picking up all the rocks with the gravity. Again, they're just using static images and animating it in a computer program. So what have we learned today? 
Well, we've learned that no matter who you are, you're always sensitive to the time it takes to produce a project. Even if you're a billion dollar company, you always have to keep this in mind, whether you're producing something in your bedroom or you have a few employees, or again, you're a billion dollar company. So the lesson learned here is that you always wanna find shortcuts and use them in a creative way. You wanna get the most amount of aesthetic value for the least amount of time and effort. If you do this, you will be successful. All right, so that concludes the video. Thank you for watching make sure that you like and subscribe. If you have any other examples of cheap tricks that were used, please post them in the discussion below. I'd love to take a look at them. So today's featured course is how to build a battle royale in Unity 3D and Blender. Build a complete battle royale from scratch. You can also take a look at some of the other courses down below. Remember that every single dollar that we get from these courses goes into producing more content. Thanks for listening and I'll see you in another video.